All right, we're going to use the DNR GPS program, which is inside this folder. You can move this folder around wherever you want, uh, in a thumb drive, anything, and use it exactly as I'm showing you here. I'm going to open it up, and there is a DNR GPS program. And that's going to convert either a GPX file that you've taken straight off of the GPS unit, or a KML file that you've saved from Google Earth by working with it. So I'm going to double click. It wants to run. I say yes, no problem. It's popped up. And now I'm going to look for the file that I want to convert. So I load from a file. And then I'm going to have to navigate to where I go. In this case, I've been working already. It pops up exactly where I wanted the file was in project background documents created and here we go you notice this is a shapefile well I've already got some shapefiles in there but I don't see anything that comes from a Garmin and that's because right now it's looking for shapefiles so I'm going to look for something from Garmin GPS exchange format that's exactly the way it comes out of the uh, the GPS unit when you transfer the files and I'm going to open that. OK. And you can see this is actually a file that was created by Tom, Piezometer Locations. And you can see that the ident field comes through. So if you've taken the time to actually label in the field, it's going to come through with lat long xy coordinate. And there is no projection here. This is a uh, geographic coordinate system file no projections involved so we've got it and we're gonna save it it's this simple we're gonna save it to another file and I want to save it to oops, I want to save it to a shape file so I can use it in art view and this time I'm gonna call it demo Piezo um, points. Keep that short because it's a shapefile. Following the naming convention for a shapefile, and I'm saving it. Pops up, says it's done. Sounds great. Let's get that out of the way. And if I want to, I can then check out. Here I've got a water garden one, and I've got a file of my points. I'm not going to disappear that. I'm going to come across, look at the catalog, and I was working in these project background documents. I'm going to refresh that. All of a sudden, I have the piezometer. Right? Pretty simple. Um, I'm just going to drop it in right now. For, uh, actually, yeah, I'll drop it in to show you, obviously, in the long run, I'm going to want to put it in to the actual geodatabase. But I just wanted to show you that this works pretty seamlessly. It's going to give me some points. And if I click on this, make it a bit larger, and make it a bright color, for piezometers. And now I'm also going to zoom in. We have some locations. And if you know where these piezometers are, um, this sort of makes sense. The one thing I am going to do is I'm going to put on my background. You notice I, I'm always working without the aerial in the background. And I have clicked on that. That may take a minute. And it's a little fuzzy, but this is where we think the piezometer locations are. Um, I have some trail and soils information. But I now have a shapefile that I can use in ArcView down here, and we're good to go.